All right, welcome back, everybody, to Making Speed. No Alexander Charles Cruz. Today, live from Prescott, pronounced like Biscuit, Arizona, we have Will Beatty with Center Force, known as the face of Center Force. Plug something. Th th throw something. Throw some. Mr. Clutch. Mr. Clutch. There you go. The legend. Yeah. He's got... He had an accident with some permanent lipstick, so he doesn't want to show his face today. Um, <laughs> so it's it's it was applied. Yeah, he looks like a French whore underneath that. Don't worry. Wait, show what show what your face really looks like. There, no, 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 no. Don't. There's a picture. Don't take Doug's under oh, there he is. Face. I don't know. Damn, that. Do you want to see the? There. The, the reveal. Ones? We were supposed to wait till exactly 22 minutes in to do the reveal of your face. But That's like a tougher I version. thought we were going to kind of build up to it, like a little face reveal striptease thing. No, I was just, I've been wearing this thing, and it's yeah. like too much. It, but it does kind of look like what you were talking about in the middle. Does it, fog, does it fog up your sunglasses? Like it fogs up my sunglasses? Yes. Yeah, it depends how, how much you're panting. <laughs> Well, it depends how excited I get, you know, and, you know, like talking to you guys. We're about to get real excited. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm about to get pretty excited here. We're, we're at, we'll, we'll tell people to watch out for your foggy glasses. Just watch yeah. out, people. Well, we're a little, you know, the air's a little thinner up here, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're at, we're at like river level here, which is a, we're, we're basically on a floodplain or just right above it. So the air, the river air's level. thin. The water might come in at any moment. Yeah, we're, we're. Yeah, we're we're not in a hundred year flood plain, but five hundred for sure. It's not good. And we've got a bad water main out in front of our building. Yeah, so. we've had a leaky water main for like two months in front of the building, so it it kind of looks like the uh, opening scene to a river runs through it. But no Brad Pitt. Fuck. That's too bad. So Someone's when are you? Uh, so no, please you can please Pitt. cut me off so I don't talk more about that movie and you know tell us a little bit about Center Force and what Center Force does. I no, most most people know all about Center Force, but we want to hear about everything from the clutches to the candy. <laughs> candy. Oh, oh God. I don't know if we want to talk. I've talked about candy with you before. Um, that candy. That's a st we'll talk about that later. Sorry, it's, got, it, all out, it all comes out. It all comes out wrong. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. The candy. The candy yeah. comes out wrong. I'm just. Then we the have a van. Wait, what? A van. You know, a little. Creepy guy with the van, and he wants some candy, little girl. <laughs> yeah, I know. You, you used that line on me before. I, I kind of knew where we were going. Um, anyway, yeah. have at it. Tell us. Uh, give us the, uh, the the history. The history. History on Center Force. Center Force actually was uh, came to, to fruition by Bill Hayes of Hayes Clutches. Right. So we're going back many, many years. Uh, Hayes clutches. Uh, obviously, Bill Hayes was was the inventor of that, and he was a full time fireman. So his side gig, you know, tw firemen were twenty four on, twenty four off, uh, and so he would get bored, and he he loved messing with cars, and he was good friends with uh, um, Tom McEwen. Uh, you know, so he. They were working back and forth, and Tom was having problems with clutches. And Bill says, you know, I think I can fix that. And that's how that relationship started. And Tom actually was the R&D guy for Hayes Clutches for Bill, and that's how they started doing clutches. And he was doing it out of a garage right. out there in Garden Grove, California. So that's how that, that whole thing started, and it just blew up. And, of course, Bill started, you know, basically retired from – the being a fireman and became full time Hayes clutches and developed electronic ignition at the same time called Hayes electronic ignition. And then uh, somebody wanted to buy the Hayes name and it, it was an investor and they offered him a substantial amount of money and he right. took it. Right. Uh, so then he had a non compete for a little while. And at that time we had the uh, business, which was in Midway city and that's where the parent name Midway industries that's comes right. from. Right. Yeah. And that was that's also in California. It's right next to Garden Grove. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer grew up in Midway City. Uh, just a little, yeah, little, little, <laughs> yeah, for you, yeah. But she, she was a meow too in Batman or something like that. Oh yeah, uh, still is. <laughs> yeah. So uh, at that time, the business became Midway Speed, and then at that time, we were doing 
differentials and clutches and flywheels, and it was all three finger stuff. And then the diaphragm clutch came out, and it had a an inherent problem of sticking over center. When you push the clutch down, it would just stay down. Right. So Bill says, "Hey, I can, I can make, I can fix that because he's just, you know, quite the inventor. His his mind never stopped." And so that's when the centrifugal weights that we put on our diaphragm came into fruition because Bill said, hey, I can do this. I can kind of like the old three finger with a bob weight. Well, he says, well, I can make add more clamp load by putting it on the diaphragm and also prevent it from sticking over center. And that's that's when he started that. And then uh, the non-compete was over. And in 1982, we started center force clutches. And the rest I think is history. I, I started working here the first time in 1987. I quit because I wanted to do heating and air conditioning for some stupid reason. Hmm. Well, you live in Arizona. And it's hot as hell. Well, no. So you do air conditioning. Oh, you're still in California. Well, they don't need heat or we're air conditioning there. California. Yeah, and then uh, a great business to get. Then I uh, I left for about a, about a little over a year or so, and then I came back. And then uh, in 1989 is when I right at the beginning of '89, and I've been here ever since. So, so what, what, what again? And let's go back. What? Why were you inspired? Did you see like a really cool movie about heating and air conditioning, and you're like, I gotta do that. No, see ya. My buddy was, my buddy was into it, and he said, Hey, I can. You can make a lot of money doing that. Go, I said, it. Okay. So, yeah, you could, but by by the time you're done paying all the union dues and everything else, the pay wasn't that great. And right. You just worked your butt off. I was driving to Palmdale every day, um, and, and I would, you know, I'd get about four o'clock in the morning and get home at five and five at, at the night. At night, and this was just like, you know, thirteen-hour days suck. You don't so, want a you don't want a no. commuting job uh, in California, do you? No, I, I don't. I try not to go there very often, but <laughs> only only when I <laughs> right, right. So, how many different so, jobs have you done in your term at Center Force? How many different jobs? Yeah, yeah. every like, well, single time. every everything, right? Other than shipping, I've never been in shipping. I started. My background is actually machinist. So, um, my buddy was working here, and he's the one who got me the job. And both of we all all lived in the same uh, housing track, and both of our dads were machinists, and we're both gearheads. You know, so you know, we're I was racing cars long before I should have been did a lot of street racing. Um, shouldn't have done that either, but we did that. Uh, and then we got into the sand drags and got into the Jeeps and we're doing that in Glantness. So building a lot of 401s, stroker 401s with a, a lot of nitrous. So we needed, we needed clutches at that point in time. And there you go. It was fortunate. We worked here and that's where we, we were always trying to make the next best, best clutch. And that's what Bill loved about what we were doing because we had the passion for it and we were always trying to make the, the monster clutch, you know, as far as, uh, you know, we had a diaphragm we called monster diaphragm, you know, for, uh, for clamp load. Then we had a killer and then atomic <laughs> or something like that. And, right. And, you know, depending on how much clamp load you wanted, you know, we take a 10 and a half inch, you know, GM pressure plate and have 4,500 pounds of clamp load, which is just absolutely ridiculous. Wow. Uh, but, uh, it didn't work great, but it had a lot of power. It worked. You know? yeah. <laughs> we just kept playing, playing, and playing, and then we started getting into friction. And uh, Bill had this idea of the dual friction, um, and that's where you put, you know, we had a full face on one side of the disc and a puck style on the other side. Yeah. And that's where the original dual friction came from was from us. And then it got copied, you know, a couple right. times. But, right. So. So the center yeah, force hold any. The Center Force hold any patents? We hold uh, ten different patents yeah. in the clutch industry. And so, how many different yeah, Bill, like, makes and models do you guys offer clutches for? Do you know that? Like twenty different applications. How many? Twenty five hundred. Wow, God, that's a lot. So our our catalog is a lot like a, a phone book. So that's why we 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 tend not to print it. Um, <laughs> it ends up being that big. Uh, it's very costly, so you know now, especially in today's electronic world, you know, you know we can do it, do it that way a lot easier. We still get Bill, some. Bill was definitely a lot of fun to work with. Right. Right. He was different. So. What What do people say about working with you? 
Well, I'm a nice guy. <laughs> I'm a nice guy. He's a, he's yeah. A, he's the face of Central. Uh, he's got to uh, be a nice guy. I think, you know, if you can get a hold my biggest problem right now is you can't get a hold of me. Uh, I'm just all over the place. So we're, uh, we're so busy. Um, you would think that, you know, during this time that, you know, business would slow down for us. It actually, I don't know what happened, but it's like clutches turned into uh, toilet paper because everybody wants a clutch. Um, and, you know, speaking of toilet paper, we have. Oh, wow. Center Force toilet paper, what, what does that say? Uh, what, there's, so there's no lead in it? Or what does that have to be to be California yeah, compliant? Yeah. Well, you know, Every, just cal- you have to, California wants that? to pay for that little sticker. It tells so, you it's got something harmful in it, even though it might not. Yep. Asbestos. It may cause something in it may cause cancer. I hate that. So that's why sticker. We, you know, yeah. it, was, it was just a way for, unfortunately, for California to make some more money. Yeah, Illinois, so. Illinois should do the same. They're always running out of money. Although they have weed now, so, but yeah, who knows? They, they try. Yeah, yeah. The, the sticker would have been easier. <laughs> <laughs> that's why he's wearing. That's where Bill got all those good ideas. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. No, we got we got down to it. So, what is your most uh, what's what kind of automotive sector do you guys sell the most to? Um, is it is it like hot rod, muscle cars, and off road kind of stuff? What 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 where what is it kind of what how, how does it break down? What are the you know I mean so loose kind of fifty fifty right now, um, and I would lean more towards the off road market at this point in time. Yeah. Uh, with our Jeep, you know, we, we developed the high inertia steel Jeep flywheels, and that's just taken off. Uh, you know, we, we had the Dyad, which I think you guys have a couple of those and mm-hmm. a couple of projects. Um, and so the street, street, you know, street market, heavy street market has always been good for us. You know, domestic, domestic muscles always been, you know, where we were. Um, you know, the LS platforms, they're just in everything. It doesn't matter what make vehicle it is there's a conversion kit to put an LS in it. Right. Uh, so, you know, those are, those are our bread and butter almost, so to speak, that and Mustang. Sure. And so the top three for us, if I'm going to list three, would be Mustang, LS, and Jeep, Jeep being number one. Yeah. It's on a lot of people's number one list now. Yeah. It's crazy. You walk through SEMA, it's like, oh, well, how many of the gladiators did we count? Yeah. It's like I don't 60, know. I think a lot. 60 or 70 of 60 them. 60 or 70. <laughs> The Jeep, you you like Jeeps, well, don't you? Are you you're, a, is it? Are you a Jeep thing? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I've got a 2017. Yeah. JK. Yeah. Well, we're out here in the mountains. You know, I'm out in the middle of nothing. It's, yeah. You can make it work. You go out. Shoot, yeah, you go shooting. You take your Jeep, and you know, sometimes you you have a beer, so that's why you always have to have one of these, so if you keep your beer cold. Shamelessly so, plugging wow. that company. Yeah. I, yeah. 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 I'm just like that. I've got little props here for. It. <laughs> I never got one from you guys, so I have to use that whole raddity center first one. Oh, really? You don't have? You never got a prop from us? Shit! Did nope. I promise you a T-shirt nope. and never deliver? I've been accused of yeah. doing that. Really? Yeah, some other stuff, some liquid stuff. Oh. We can help you out with that. We, you know what? There's a lot of hand sanitizer production happening in part of our shop at the <laughs> moment. We'll send you a B- believe it or not, yeah, we've got uh, 55 gallon drums, we've got five gallon buckets, and we have 750s of. Hand sanitizer in a vodka bottle. So I want to take some shine, some clear shine. Yeah. And I want to put this in it. Ooh. Okay. I want to melt this down. Yeah. And then put some shine. I think some Center Force candy shine. Yeah. Would be awesome. I think it would be interesting. We, you know, we, uh, the name of our distillery is called Naked Spirits. So we figured hmm. you would, you would maybe no, want to throw some. No, I mean we're not gonna not have you. We're not gonna have you take your clothes off and not pay you. Off. It's gonna be worth. It's gonna be worth it. Uh, I don't, okay. Yeah, you can buy some more Jeep parts. Sweet. Uh, Jeeps are just a money pits. So a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of the clutches we've gotten from you guys. You know, as soon as you open the box, like candy falls out. Um, wh- yeah. What's the history? No. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's and it's delicious. It's kind of like a. How would you describe? fruity like uh it's, it's kind of like a if cactus cooler you know the yeah, old yeah, cactus yeah. cooler yeah. The flavors pineapple orange so whose idea so, was was it your idea in in 1987 or six or whatever year you started there uh, to 86 is when they first started doing candy 
And uh, they were a bigger candy. It was a single one that was a lot bigger than that. And uh, they just took off. Uh, and everybody wanted candy. We go to the different shows, you know, like SEMA and everywhere else. And even to this day, people come to the booth and say, where's the candy? It's like, where's well, the- you know, hey, how are you? You want to know anything about clutches? No, where's the candy? That's all we want. So the candy's kind of just taking a big thing. But, yeah, the since 1986 is when we were doing candy. And then, oh, about five years ago, uh, that company went belly up. And they stiffed us for about – Three thousand dollars of candy, son of a, and it was like gosh. <laughs> three weeks before SEMA. Yeah, we had a, a you know the order in, and it was three weeks before SEMA, and we'd had our uh, uh, rep group go out there, R&R Marketing, and they went out there and raided their place and found a couple boxes of candy uh, that we were able to have for for SEMA for the first two hours of the show, and then that was it. I got some. I actually had a terrible. I had like a terrible cold, maybe a week or so before SEMA, so I had the worst cough ever when I showed up. And the candy is what got me through. Saved him. Yeah. That's why I eat it, because you talk so much, you know, after you're on a show, and it, it kind of helps your, you know, coat your throat a little bit. Isn't there a YouTube video of the candy being there made is. somewhere? Yeah. How it was made. It's, it's extremely interesting how it was made. I mean, if nobody's ever seen it, go to that YouTube video and, and see how Center Force candy's made. It was It's very interesting. So they, like, fold it all up, and then they start stretching. I, oh, the name's in yeah. the middle of it, though. That's the... Right. That's the thing that, yeah. yeah. And it says, I heart center for Right. So, you know, the first time I watched it, I was watching them do it, and it's like, what is that black stuff they're putting in there? And, you know, like, and then it's like, oh, duh, it's the letters. So I had to go back and watch it again, and it's like, how do they take a blob, a black blob, and make it into the letter, and then they, you know, extrude it, and they pull right. it by hand. And it's so legible, and, and it's so small. And I was like, wow, that's just unbelievable. And whoever had that idea, and they're sitting there rolling it on a hot, you know, a hot stove bill, hot pad. So who makes the candy yeah. now that those guys are out of business? Yeah, did you guys just hire them and put them on uh, your payroll? And no, it's, we had a, it took us about six months to find another company to duplicate what we had. They just couldn't do it at that that same size candy. So they now we get them in their little packets like this, and we got a bunch of little ones, which seems to work out. Um, it's a place in Hollywood. Uh, the heck if you watch the video and I even said it on the video and I don't remember what it is now um creative candy or something like that yeah well, yeah. there isn't uh, where do you there, he's, there right. he goes oh, he's, he's off he's gonna look it up sticky, sticky candy so they sticky so good they name. made these for us yeah because people just buy the candy so we, we have some of these Can we but buy yeah it's sticky are those on the in the gift shop next to the stickers of your face no, it, that was the only one you're gonna get. Oh. Damn. So when when's the next sh- what what's the next show you guys are gonna go to? It's no a little trick for no one knows. <laughs> so the candy's kind of piling up if you can't hand it out, right? You just send us a lot. Uh, more. Our next scheduled one because we just missed one last weekend uh, is probably Overland Expo up in Flagstaff, and that's in July. So hopefully everything will be hopefully it happens done. By- do you think SEMA's yeah. going to happen this year? Man, I don't know. Um, they say it's going to happen, but, you know, right. you, everybody comes from all over the world at that point in time, and that's the beginning of flu season. Right. And last year at SEMA, you know, you'd swear that everybody already had the, this whole virus because everyone's coughing and everything. So A lot I of people know. got sick this uh, year at SEMA. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. so it, it's typical – uh, to get sick at SEMA. So I'm usually always wiping my hands and, uh, you know, we're just always trying to keep clean because you shake so many different hands. Yeah. Uh, and this was the first year I had not gotten sick at SEMA. I got sick before so, SEMA. And then, so by the time I got to SEMA, I was just coughing. And then when we went to Barrett Jackson, I was terribly sick. I so, thought he was going to die. I'm pretty sure was, I already had the, death. I'm pretty sure I had the coronavirus. I, I feel like it, they said it was in the There's U.S. So in the middle of January, um, and that's when it was. I was sick for weeks. It was really weird. I have never been that sick before, but it could have been something else. Who knows? I'm, I am weak and feeble. Yeah, well, the flu, you know, the flu just goes around, too. So the, right? You don't you know, know what it is. The symptoms are, symptoms are the same, you know, similar. So, um, yeah. Well, I hope SEMA, I don't know, it's, it's, it's with so many of those shows, you know, a lot of there's a lot of advertising money that goes into it, so it's hard. 
I think it's becoming hard for these show promoters to, you know, throw all the cash out and do all the advertising it takes when maybe your staff is, you know, cut in half or almost non-existent at this point. And, you know, it's it's like, what, what do you what do you do? I don't know. It's a, it's a tricky thing. I was talking about it with Charles this morning. I don't know. I don't know how you how you plan around that, you know. And I think a lot of companies are kind of holding on to their money right now, too. They don't know what the you know, if they want to spend money on that kind of thing. You don't know when this is, you know, how it's going to hit. And, you know, we're even though we're, we're doing pretty good right now, I mean, in a month from now, it could just the bottom could fall out. So now you're, you're prepping for because a lot of people are out of work, you know, unfortunately. So, you know, those discretionary dollars are start being saved for different things. Right. Um, so I it's you know, our, we are not a, a need product. It is a want product. Um, unless your car is actually down, but it's, uh, I don't know, you know, it, it's scary to think about all the different shows and, you know, we're, we're, we're already paying for SEMA right now for our booth, but it's, you know, we hope, you know, it, it'll be scary. It'd definitely be different. You know, a lot of people will be walking around with these masks, oh, yeah. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Um, and keeping their distance and, you know, but I, you know. I think it's going to be a little thin. That place is so crowded. I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to keep your distance in the uh, central hall there when you're packed shoulder to shoulder. But I don't know. Yeah. So why all that? You know, it falls right in the place. So at least we're not going to Saudi this year. Is it over? Are they not doing that again? What's the deal? No, I haven't heard anything on that. That. I thought that show was a. You know that that show had some. You know some things that didn't go so smoothly, but overall I it thought was it was very cool. successful yeah. and pretty cool. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what your feelings I, were. I, you know, I mean, you were like just a couple of booths yeah. away from us. Uh, we had a great time there uh, and the people were so nice. I was totally, totally taken back uh, on how nice the people were there. Yeah. 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 Nice. Do you do any business I, over I, there? Yeah. We got a little bit. We we sold everything through uh, Diversified, Mike Copeland over there. Yeah. You know, so we sold everything through him. He did some. Uh, we didn't do anything direct, and we did go look for. We already had a couple uh, shops out there that we worked with. So. Uh, they... It was it was more of the experience. Yeah. And and that was just so much fun. I, I will tell you that going out there, you know, with the the bombings that had it happen just prior to us going out there. Yeah. And that first night of the show, it was at nine o'clock, and uh, the guy, the, uh, our sales manager Harold, he was out walking around, wanted to see the loop, you know, the Hot Wheel loop. Yeah. And and I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden I hear, boom, boom, and everybody, like from from your booth, just took off and ran outside, and I'm like, what's going on? Whoa! I'm freaking out for a minute, you know, and it seemed like forever. And then you know I start hearing, like, ta, 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 ta. I'm like, what is that? It was the fireworks, fireworks show went right. off. <laughs> because of all the hype and everything that everybody threw at you, I was immediately, I thought, bombings and gunfires going off. That's right. the first thing that came right. out. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was probably five seconds that I realized what it was, but, you know, that was a long five seconds because I was yeah. pretty freaked out. You, you, were pro, you were trying to figure out how to take cover under a uh, pop-up tent, a, gi- a giant pop-up <laughs> tent, right? Like, I don't know about this thing. Yeah, well, before we went, it was interesting because, you know, everybody, you, you got advice from everybody on what it was going to be like, um, what to do there, how to yeah. behave, how to dress. Um, none of these people have ever even been to the Middle East. So yeah, these nine were, out of these, ten people you talked to were yeah. like, oh, I wouldn't do that. These, were, these that. are people that had never been to the Middle East. They probably watched a lot of Fox News, but, you know, that's, that's all right. And they read some stuff on the Internet, but everybody had advice for you. But those same people gave me advice when, you know, on how to buy Bitcoin, and they also gave me advice on how to how to do a lot of other stuff on online. So anyway, there's, but it was a, I, I thought it was such a cool experience. So I'm hoping I keep asking people like, is it going to happen again? What's the deal? Yeah. yeah, I would I would go again in a heartbeat. It was I, I would uh, too. What a blast! It started. It would. It's funny because we would always leave it about eleven o'clock at night. Right. But the yeah. the show people were pouring in there at eleven o'clock at night because they had that other kind of. Uh, the, the, the concert party, venue, yeah. like party thing, that would start kicking off then. So, right when we were leaving, there was people just lined still, up. Yeah, yeah, lined up and dumping in that place. It they, was like being at, at, at midnight, it was like Disneyland there. 
Yeah. You yeah. just couldn't walk around because that was the last bus that we could catch was at midnight. Um, and we had missed it and uh, had to get an Uber. And that's another thing. I'd, Uber out there. Who would have thought I thought that was something you could get? But uh, that's how we, we got around was Uber. It works. Yeah. One, one thing that uh, people did tell me that actually ended up being true is, you know, people there stay up really late. You know, and, I, and a lot of it has to do with oh, the desert the heat. The heat yeah. You know, so like the their day starts almost at nighttime, and yeah. people they they will hold meetings at like one o'clock in the morning and just do you know it's stuff that they're on like a different type of schedule. So they're they're definitely night owls, and uh, we we kind of saw that firsthand because we we leave the show and we go out to dinner and eat at these restaurants, you know, until that, one or two in the morning. Yeah. There was, there were, and there'd be babies in there yeah. and like little kids and you know, it was just kind of the normal thing. It's, and people like, I don't, I don't know what time they sleep to during the day, but <laughs> you know, it's uh it's, everything's kind of shifted I don't think later people work there. <laughs> I think most of the Saudi nationals like don't, don't even work. I don't think so either. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, we went through that, you know, they had that car show right out of our hotel there. And, uh, we went to the mall. I was going to go get some stuff, you know, wanted to go to Starbucks and get a, uh, a Riyadh cup for right. my wife. And, yeah. And I'm getting there and they're all shutting the door. I'm like, this is 11 o'clock in the morning. What's going on? You know, but that's when they closed down was at 11, 11 in, in the morning. Well, they're prayer time too. Yeah. Prayer time yeah. too. Yeah. They were closed for prayer time. That was a little different because that booth next to us. Yeah. Was empty because their part, you know, their booth hadn't shown up yet. So every time I'd walk around, there's always, you know, a, a row of people praying right there and that was something that i wasn't used to seeing either but uh. yeah it's an interesting thing because you'll see people i mean at prayer time people just stop whatever they're doing our They'll, driver stopped and got out yeah, of the car pulled off, pulled off yeah. the road and started praying it's just something <laughs> that yeah we, we don't have you know there's some i think there's a lot of religious people in the united states but i think people across the board and you know saudi arabia are much more religious um, in their in their own way so you find right. you know but yeah, people people will stop and pray. You know, doesn't matter where you are. You just just something you do. So and then the the prayer speaker goes off in the middle of the night, which is always like yeah. at four in the morning or whenever that is. I, you I hear it as a whole city. It's kind of kind of weird the first time you hear it. Out of like what what would be a tornado siren speaker here? They yeah. it, it would it would come blaring through there. So what, what, I was like, what, what is that? You know, tornado. <laughs> first thing I thought was tornado, but that's not what it was. But did you guys go four wheeling out in the desert? Did you go with Khan out to the middle of nowhere? Were you part of that we group? Did. Yes, we did. That was awesome. Yeah. So we got to drive the. Uh, they let us drive the Nissan patrols in the sand and everything. It was pretty cool. Oh man, oh, those yeah. things are really cool. I put one of these stickers on one of the Nissan patrols out there. Did you really? That's great. Yeah. They said, oh, it was, he's like, oh, you're from Center Force. Yeah. And he shows me a video, and his brother had just bought a Center Force clutch, and they were showing it. And then so they were so excited that we were out there. And then uh, Luke at Khan says, hey, do you have any of your, your stickers? I said, yeah. He says, can we put it on the, the truck? And that's what we ended up doing was putting it on the truck, and they were just so, so nice. excited about that. I was like, wow, that's weird, but okay. <laughs> One of the interesting things that, you know, I, I heard in terms of, like, parts suppliers over there is, like, a lot of people's – parts you know a lot of uh, parts companies that went over there they you know they weren't really sure if their parts were in distribution there or not like they, they kind of thought they were but um they found like a lot of a lot of the parts were like three and four times as much as they were being sold for in the u.s just because of it's kind of harder to get get some of those parts in so i can't remember who we were talking about but they were going through was it rich i think it and, was yeah it was rich from uh, Magnaflow. Yeah, rich at magnaflow was telling us the part you know he had they were selling actually a lot of, he found out they were selling a lot of exhaust systems over there but they were going through Dubai first, right, and then coming through Saudi Arabia. So by the time everybody was making something, as they do everywhere like else in the world, party sales, yeah. But it was party, going through yeah. so many hands by the time, by the time it got to you know Saudi Arabia, like a eight hundred dollar exhaust system was like like twenty four hundred dollars, yeah, something, something like that. You know, or eight hundred dollar retail. Like, did did you? Is that did you did you do you have someone over there that regularly sells Center Force stuff or yeah, is, yeah. Uh, in Dubai we do yeah in Dubai um, right. Dubai. Yeah. So uh, I don't know what they sell them for, though. Four by four stuff? I know a lot of Jeep, a lot of LS, and a lot of Ford. But exactly what I sell you, the three. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, because we had, it's funny, we had a couple of kids come up with GT500s, you know, and I'm like, 
are you even old enough to drive? But, you know, but they could, that's what they, that was their car. Right. And it was a you know, 900 horse GT 500. Yeah. I'm like, wow. Yeah. So yeah, a couple of those. And, uh, there was a guy that had a Nissan patrol making 1500 horsepower. Was that at, was that um, at the, uh, mall cars and coffee show? That there, black one, that yeah. guy was, he was getting ready to go down to Dubai to race the other guy that was at uh, 1600 horsepower. God, but yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy, crazy. I mean, they're basically, you know, running super motors in those scenes. So, right. Uh, There's a lot so. of LS swapped uh, C10s there, too. Square mm -hmm. bodies. They love square bodies with the LS. GMCs. Yeah, GMCs, yeah. yeah. Right. Although, right, did you see that uh, stubby dually with the 454 four yeah. speed? Yep. Yeah. The blue, it was blue. I think I yeah. took a picture of that. Yeah, that was cool. All the uh, they're they're all into the yeah. It's got to be a GMC because I think those were oil field trucks that were imported yeah. a long time ago. So the the square body or the pickup truck that everybody relates to there is the GMC uh, square mm -hmm. body truck. So we we, were, we went to a dealership after we ate dinner. We drove there was like this exotic car dealership and a kind of like a strip mall. We went in there and they were like, oh, come in the back, come look at our cars. And they had some you know stuff that had been imported from the U.S. Some classic American stuff, some kind of weird oddball. But they were saying that everybody wants, you know, GMC, GMC. Yeah. So we, we had a scheme that we were going to send over all these nice GMCs, but nice square bodies are hard to hard to find, you know, period. So did you guys sell your bug? No, no. no. Nope. I knew that one girl was really interested. She yeah, was really but, interested. Yeah, right? didn't hear any more from her. Mm -hmm. I thought I thought that was going to sell for I, sure. Too, yeah. um, you know, we didn't we, we kind of went over there with without any. There, there had been so much hype about, you know, people about bringing a car there and how it's going to be how the how the, the auction, you know, it's going to be propped up by the Saudi government and how everything was going to sell for this crazy money. And the more I heard it, we, we go to a lot of auctions and we, we've seen a lot of cars sell. We've, yeah. We we just that's kind of what we do. We go buy and sell stuff there um, uh, outside of the car build stuff and. I look at, I get all the, you know, constantly in my email, it's some auction sending me the results. I'm like, it's like an international, it, it's a global market. You know, everybody knows what this stuff is worth. It all kind of brings the same, whether it's an auction in Monaco or at Pebble Beach or at a Mecham auction in Indianapolis. So I, there's a point where I was like, I don't think stuff's going to bring what it is, what, it, what they're saying it's going to. And I, I kind of hoped it would for people. So we, ne we didn't actually bring our cars over there to sell we just brought them over as display vehicles and yeah so it would yep. have been i don't know it would have been we, we kind of went out with low expectations and uh the the idea that we were going to have a really good time so yeah, that yeah the people been. with high expectations they they had marked their car up so high right that it was like and they took it as an insult so yeah you know it's like everybody knows what well we all have the internet we, we, can we, look up, we can figure it out in a matter of five <laughs> minutes, pretty much, right? The yeah. other thing is, you know, the other thing that I, I kind of felt off to me is like a lot of, you know, all these all the, the muscle cars, you know, this stuff is, you know, steeped in nostalgia. It's it's you, you like muscle cars because your dad liked muscle cars or your and your grandpa liked muscle cars and or someone had one that you really wanted. But in a culture where where that kind of stuff isn't around and hasn't been around, you know, until maybe recently, there's no love for. You know, the, the it's 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 kind of like the weird oddball car over there is a classic American car, you know. Um, so I, there's not really a well, there's not really a market for that kind of stuff the way the way there is in U.S. where people are just obsessed with their muscle cars. Well, because, and at that price point, because right, in, in so their it, mind, like they would rather spend the money on a Ferrari and roll up somewhere because of the status of that car. You know, the status of that car is different, you know, than it is to us. So. I think that's the biggest the biggest hang up they have over there right now. Yeah. They Huge. love they like classic cars, no doubt about they it. Like classic, but, but and the they love cars. Yeah, yeah, they love cars, you yeah. know, especially but a lot of the people I talked to over there and we talked and talked to everybody we could just to kind of see what the deal was and it was people were interesting and engaging. But um, a lot of the people that you know, a lot of exotic cars that people there own they actually keep in the US or in the in the UK or in another country where they travel and they'll go drive the heck out of their car in some other right. country. So um, a lot of a lot of those cars aren't even kept in Saudi Arabia. A lot of the exotic cars they're they're kept other places where, where people enjoy them. So I could, I could not imagine driving a car like that 
over there. No, the roads are way too rough, and they, the people are crazy <laughs> when well, they drive. Yeah, the roads are rough, and the their driving style. No, no way. No, no. I, 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 that was crazy. I don't. Riding in the bus. Yeah. That was an experience in itself. <laughs> every single day. Yeah. That was just. You didn't know if you're going to make it there. Yeah. And a bus driver, you ask him a question, and he had no clue what you're saying. <laughs> but that was part you of know? the fun, I think. Even though yeah. it was a little oh, yeah. scary, it's like I would go back and. It was you know, entertaining. For sure. it, it was. Yeah. You know, when we, were, we were going, the bus was going down the, the fast lane, and then here comes a car, you know, trying to pass him in here. <laughs> and a guy just starts going over like this. And he, <laughs> he flipped the front of the, the car, and he just kept on going. And then the guys like came back around and, and went around and got in the front of him and then hit his brakes. It was like, we were only going maybe 30 miles an hour, you right. know, on, I don't know what the speed limit is there, but, uh, uh yeah, it's I mean, gotta be, there may be a recommended speed limit. Yeah. I don't know. But there's no road but, yeah, rage that's... really. Everybody kind of like drives and bumps into each other and nobody's like screaming and yelling or flicking each other off. They're just kind of doing their thing. And I don't know why they, they put stripes on the road, on the lanes, because they do not pay attention to those at all. No, it's interesting. You know, it's, it's kind of uh, the dynamic of driving on a Saudi highway is similar yeah. to something you'd find on a racetrack where everybody knows <laughs> something's going to happen. Like you can drive on someone's bumper because right. you know they're not going to hit the brakes because they're trying to go fast as well. Um, but, yeah, there's like this mutual respect for, for crazy driving. Um, and if you want – you don't have to, but if you want to get off at an exit, you can you can just go flying across eight lanes of a highway and, and exit, you know, a couple hundred yards before your exit, and nothing ever seems to happen. So, or you can just drive off road yeah, next to the off road driving is very popular there. Yeah, because yeah. I said eight lanes, but there's really there's another lane or there's two really this strip the of dirt on either side of the highway that is that it is counts. totally fair game. <laughs> They just pull over to the side and have a fire and start having a little party. So it's kind of their ATVs camping. Out. Yeah. So we, yeah. we should talk. Camping. We should talk about that because yeah, there's there's no there's not really any trees. I yeah. mean, there's kind of like desert brush, um, tough little bushes and stuff that probably grow slowly because it's not a whole lot of water. But out in the middle of nowhere, it's kind of just looks like the desert, and um, there's always people just pulled off the highway they've got like a blanket or a rug rolled out and they're just kind of all hanging out sometimes it would be like in a place that looked like like oh that's kind of you know that looks like oh, i guess you could hang out there but sometimes there'd be like trash and stuff blown around it wouldn't even look that nice and i said like what what are these people doing i said they're camping i was like oh they're just camping there you go so uh, it's uh, I w we need a picture of we, I, 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 I didn't paint a good picture, but yeah, there's everybody just it's pull camping. off. The yeah, they pull camping. off the highway and they're sitting in the middle of a like super dusty, you know, plane, and they're just hanging out. So very family oriented culture. Yeah, it was it was just weird and to see all that stuff and like I said, what an experience, but uh, just different. Yeah, for sure. So what's new in the 2020 year for center force do you guys have anything that you can talk about that you're developing yeah we've been we just finished up we've been working with the uh couple of the i'm gonna call them influencers uh one of them was jillian rebecca uh on instagram she's got a late model tacoma so we dove into the tacoma world and it's a clutch for that and then another guy uh i don't know if you guys are familiar with trail recon and this is the off-road stuff. Yep. So it's, uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, we were doing some some JL and Gladiator clutches is okay. what we've been playing with. And then we have a, a big power 11-inch twin that we're looking to send back uh, to Florida. There's a guy out there making some huge power that, that we're going to send that off to to see if we can uh, make something happen there. And, of course, nice. we've got our uh, – we got a uh, – made an entry-level twin uh, to compete in a little more affordable and it, we call it the SST mm -hmm. and it's uh, retails under a thousand dollars. So it's, you get the same flywheel that we put in our dyad and the same floater system. And it's a rigid hub disc instead of a sprung hub with the, uh, a ball bearing pressure plate. And 
holds 925 foot pounds of torque, all fully balanced and ready to rock and roll. Sounds, sounds like awesome. A, yeah. Sounds like enough. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, yeah, that and just a little of everything. We have uh, some evil stuff we're playing with and some uh, Miata. We have a Miata out, out there on the getting ready to go on the lift right now that we're going to play with because those are just, just every Miata is a manual. So. Right, right. When a new vehicle comes out, how fast is it, you know, or how long does it take for you guys to develop a new clutch for it? Or do you even try to play in that game at all? We, we do. The only one that we did that with uh, right away was actually the uh, the Jeep JL um, in trying to get one. So we had to wait for one to come, uh, you know, in where, where we could actually get our hands on it. Because that's what we have. we normally have to do is get our hands on them and then, you know, see what's in there. Because, uh as far as aftermarket clutches and that that sort of thing, it's you know we, we kind of do things our own way, and uh, you know what the OE had put in something is not necessarily what we're going to put right back in there. So everything has to be able, in some cases, bolt to the stock flywheel, right? Or we have to make a whole new set of setup flywheel, pressure plate, disc, and everything, and it all has to work in the stock hydraulic with, with the stock hydraulics, right? So I would also assume everything. That- since there are less and less manual transmission vehicles being made, you guys are playing around in a lot more of, you know, performance and, you know, late, late model stuff than, than current, current vehicles. Does that sound like it's a yeah, it, correct assumption? Yeah. I mean, obviously the Mustang's even stepping away from the manual transmission. So, you know, all of your medium duty trucks, if you will, you know, like Dodge, the Dodge truck and Ford truck and, the diesel trucks and Chevy, uh, they're all automatic now. Right, right. Um, but there's still a lot of manual transmissions out there. Uh, we just started working with the American Powertrain, and those guys, you know, go through a lot of clutches as well. Uh, you know, there's here you got all those manual transmissions they're sending out. Uh, they're going somewhere. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where, but they're going somewhere still. So. Yeah. And, and the nice thing about a clutch, it's it's a it's a wear item. Yeah. So. Right. You know, sooner or later you're going to have to change the beginning. You know, it's like brakes, you know, or tires. Yeah. And there's a lot of, like, just LS conversions, like you said, going on, too, where people are just, they're taking cars that were never manuals, you know, or uh, V8-powered, for that matter. You know, they're taking Miatas even and doing LS conversions yeah. to them. So it's like anything can be converted and put a five or a six-speed behind it. So uh, that's a bit, it's, like you said, it's probably a, probably one of your largest markets right now the ls is very large uh but even still the old toyotas and you know volkswagens and and everything else are still we still have product for all of that right and those are still going out there so you know those cars are those vehicles are still out there so it's you you know guys inventory most of that stuff or is a lot of your product built to order or made to order Uh, obviously we don't sell typically sell direct and we're selling to you know all of our distributors so um they as far as say that uh, uh, ask me that question again so how much how much of that stuff do you have in inventory like for you know say a 1964 volkswagen do you have a clutch like that laying around or do you guys build those as somebody orders it those are those are custom built because we actually build a custom one for that okay um so, but we do have the components. So certain things are hard to get right now. So with this whole pandemic and, and everything happening and us being so busy at this time of year um, was really kind of threw us off. I mean, March was huge for us. Uh, that's usually not a huge month for us. Right. Uh, so, you know, at the end of the year, we tried to dwindle down our inventory so that we're not carrying a lot because our physical was actually January. Uh, so we don't, you know, you know, have to pay a lot of taxes for, you know, having a lot of inventory in house. So we dwindle everything down, and that's usually our so slow time anyway. But we kind of got caught with our pants down when all of these orders started hit coming in. Right. And so trying to catch up and get product, and then all this, you know, the COVID nineteen stuff happened, and now it's hard to get material. So it's yeah. uh, most cases we we have everything in, in house to fulfill orders, but. Uh, I think we back ordered almost 30 grand last, last month. Wow. Huh. Orders. Wow. Cause you guys wouldn't really be stocked up 
ready to rock again until like you know later in the spring probably april and may is when we start ramping up gotcha all right you know that's basically the race season so the race season usually started in uh in april this month so this is when you know we start really ramping up but uh yeah we guess we got hit and i think i think part of it's due to people staying at home and internet surfing so uh we've we've seen a a huge uptick in like you know just phone calls emails car sales we thought it was going to go the other way but i think people are and that's why I'm, you know, we're hoping that, you know, this can kind of, you know, the first round or whatever of yeah. the COVID stuff can kind of wrap up soon. So it can kind of get back to normal. But we've been we've been busy, you know, busier than we much busier than we thought we would be. You know, and a lot of it's people are people are at home and they're bored. Oh, and, yeah. you know, I think there's probably a lot of people that are buying center force clutches that are finishing up projects that they, you know, have been sitting For around sure. and. Maybe they're 10 years old or 15 years old, right. or maybe they just started them, but they're getting a lot of work done because what else are they going to do? You know, I'm doing the same thing. So it's, uh, you know, I don't, we don't go out at night and do anything. So I'm at home, you know, buying parts for the Jeep or for the Mustang. So it's, right. it's, it's a good thing. It's a good yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, in wrapping up, where can uh, where can people find you? Uh, what's your cell phone number? You probably just shout that out. Real, uh, uh, okay, so yeah. Where, real where, can, where can people find you guys? Uh, you know, where, where can where can uh, listeners go to learn more? Uh, Centerforce.com is usually our first place uh, for people to go and try to find product and, and information. But uh, you know, always don't be afraid to give us a call. We'd love to hear from them uh, if you have any questions or whatever you know we our eight our 800 number is 800-932-5882 uh give it you know like i said give us a call we'd like to talk to you so awesome most time when people are buying a clutch they never think about the next step so right uh, we like to make sure we cover all the bases and, and pick the right clutch the first time you guys do have awesome customer service maybe that's because we deal directly with you i don't know that's why i was thinking if you could just just throw just, your cell phone number out there people people would yeah <laughs> All right. If you remember the beginning of the conversation, I said that one of the things people have problem with me right now is getting a hold of me. So yeah, it's because they don't have that number. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, Will, thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you. And, and we'll send uh, that care package. Your yeah, way. we'll sell. Yeah, we just want candy. Yeah, send us yeah, your. Yeah, we need one of those. We have a bunch of these. You do. They, they took off like. Yeah, they. One of the girls made that, and uh, Ashton Robinson for. Uh, she made that. And it took off. She made six hundred dollars in one week in selling stickers. What? Really? If you can believe that. With your head? Yeah. yeah. People wanted it. I'm like, what is going on? And I didn't even get a cut. I didn't get nothing. Really? Get I didn't even get a beer or anything. No. Oh. Yeah, I got I got screwed royally on you that. You need deal. to work on your negotiating skills yeah. versus like maybe buying you know, parts that cheap. That way, you just gave your like you just gave your likeness away like that. And <laughs> I don't know. It's gonna be now that there's precedent of that likeness being used. It's going to yeah. be hard for for you to kind of track us down when we're selling those face stickers of you. <laughs> Go for it. I, don't I, wonder who, I wonder if anybody's got a tattoo of that yet. You should work on getting there's, somebody there, to do that. At uh, the NM, NMCA races, there's a guy who says, hey, if I get a tattoo of your face on my on my arm, can I get a free clutch? I said, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Abs- absolutely. If you put it on your face, you can get two free clutches. Right. On your ass? I don't know. Uh, yeah, we, got, that. we like to have it, unless you're wearing chaps, you know, right. we like to have it in a place that's that's visible. So, all right, well, thank so, you. Well, thank you so much. You know. getting, yeah, thank you. Who's getting a tattoo? Noah or? I'll, I don't know. Charles. I think Charles no, will probably I'll get it. I'll Charles do will it. get it. Clutches for life. Yeah. 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 You guys already have that. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Will. Uh, thank you. It. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having us on. All right. See ya. Take care. See ya.